what is up? Oh, we got a question right away. First question, you see anything in Max? Max's last two performances are weight cuts that would argue for Max going to 55 still. No. <laughs> he just smashed Frankie Edgar for 25 minutes. Max Holloway is the great featherweight in the world, and um, after you beat Frankie Edgar like that, uh, that's definitive. Could he go back up, and will he at some point? Of course he will. But thank you for your question. Uh, greetings, my friends. I am at... This, by the way, is sugar. This is not healthy. They, they try to tell us it's healthy. This is not healthy, but it is tasty. And I'm treating myself. I have a long couple of days, so I'm treating myself. Uh, it's mostly sugar. I'm on my way to Myanmar, Mandalay, Myanmar. I'm going to be commentating Le Wei, 2,000-year-old martial arts, Burmese bare-knuckle boxing, punches, elbows, knees, kicks, and headbutts. Um, I will be taking some questions in a few minutes. My plane is delayed. So I'm very thankful to have you guys here to chat with. And because uh, it gets lonely, these fucking two-day travel days. This travel day is a lot longer than a day. I've got to go to Hong Kong, and then I've got a layover, and then I go to Yangon, Myanmar, and then I go to a hotel and sleep, and then I take a domestic flight in Myanmar to Mandalay. So it'll be very long. Uh, I will try to pop up again on YouTube and definitely on Instagram Live. I go on Instagram Live a fair bit. I'm at Robin Black Martial Arts on Instagram. Also, if you do go to my Instagram, please check out my layway breakdown. It's uh, it's really cool. Uh, Joe said he'd never heard of this particular martial art until your breakdown video, and now you're a fan. That's what I'm hoping. I want to do this. It's a long way to go to do this, but I want to do it out of love and my appreciation for these martial artists. But uh, I also want to you know, act as an ambassador and make sure that some people who might not have otherwise been exposed to this beautiful art form get exposed to it. So that's what we're doing. Uh, Max Holloway, Frankie Edgar last night. I mean, when you can't touch Max Holloway, that's the thing we're forgetting. We think, oh, he's always in, you know, he, he is not all about self-preservation uh, usually. Although last night, he looked, he looked like he took about as much punches as I took last night. Actually, I look a, a lot worse probably than young Max Holloway looks. And he's fighting Frankie, one of the greats, two great, true greats. So, and it's, a lot of it is, when you know you are unsafe when when your opponent is unsafe you make him feel safe and when your opponent isn't safe you know like you, you reverse it so frankie feels like um, we got some questions i'm going to hold on to them here frankie feels like he can hit max he cannot there are times where he feels like he's safe from max and he's not and that's manipulation that's what max does so he does a lot of brilliant things uh what do you think Frankie Edgar did wrong against Max Holloway? Absolutely nothing. He didn't do anything wrong. He did nothing wrong. He just lost. You don't have to do anything wrong to lose. Frankie fought a brilliant fight. Beautiful, wonderful fight. Think of, this is a very important, I believe this is a very important detail. People say that a lot. What was his mistake? You know, life, in life you can do the correct thing and still fail. And that's okay. That's a part of life. Uh, everything won't always work. Even when you, Frankie fought, you know, Frankie could have been the second best fighter on planet Earth last night. He lost. You're going to lose. Didn't do anything wrong. You know, if we want, oh, Frankie should have closed the distance. He didn't understand range. It's not true. Also, who the, and I, I say this a lot lately, who the fuck am I or you or somebody with a YouTube channel to say what one of the greatest fighters in the world did, did wrong? And I'm not being critical of your question. I love your question. I appreciate your question. But what Frankie did wrong, who the fuck am I to say that? I have no uh, no right. Anybody who criticizes Frankie Edgar, who is was not, and nowhere near that cage, has no right. Uh, he fought brilliantly. He just was the second best fighter in that cage last night. I mean that. Oh, uh, hey, Joe. Hopped over from Instagram. What up? Uh, Lee, how you doing? Unemployed Mario Yamasaki. Have fun. Thank you. Uh, pretty, um, would you, yeah, so, but thank you for that question. I know that you're not criticizing Frankie. I'm just saying we can reframe this. Frankie Edgar was the second best fighter in that cage last night. He could have been the second best fighter on planet earth. He could have had the second best, uh, uh, performance that anybody could have had on planet earth last night. He still lost. That's okay. Uh, BJ Penn, uh, BJ, I endorse these people's right 
to, if the doctor says they're healthy enough, I endorse their right to fight. Um, it's their lives. I, and it's your life. Do, do what's right for you. Um, if a doctor says you are not in any additional risk, uh, I endorse your right. Do, and then somebody might ask me, um, do I think PJ should be in there? Again, I have no right. I have no right. Do I have a right to an opinion? Yeah, sure. But is it meaningful to BJ or his family or anybody else? Or should it be meaningful to anybody? Not really. I honestly are really interested in what is. What is is BJ is, is not what he once was, but he desperately wants to fight and he's medically healthy enough according to whatever doctors check him out, and he will fight. That's what is. Um, people's opinion of what is, including my own opinion, not super, not super interested. Don't care what my thought is on it. And, I, and I'm not trying to be difficult. These are I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Over time, I, I place less value, less and less value, continually less and less value on opinions of others and the opinions of myself. I'm just looking for what is. Uh, Nico Price, yes, yes, always comes to entertain. What's up from Winnipeg? That is my hometown. Um, Robertson, yes, good stuff. Surprise streams are the fucking best, says Adam. Uh, well, I'm, my flight is delayed, so you know what can I do? I'm lonely, too. I get to talk to you guys, like-minded people. Uh, asking about Frankie at 135. Again, that's going to be his option. Uh, he doesn't. Synth, uh, Synth Wicked Wiz Kid says, talk about Frankie's footwork. Brilliant. Brilliant footwork. Just, you know, not as brilliant as Max's last night. Effective and smart and intelligent, talented. He changed the way that people move their feet and head and body when they fight. If you go back, the first one was Sean Shirk. Started working with Mark Henry. Mark Henry came from the boxing world, saw a guy who was quite mobile and was a, by threatening takedowns and then moving over here, striking and moving back over here. That simple uh, concept just didn't exist really in, in MMA at the time. You watch that Shirk fight and then go back and find a hundred other fights that took place that night or in the two years before, nobody would have moved like Frankie. This is the truth. I, I was there, you know. Uh, what do you think is the best possible thing fight right now in the UFC. Again, my opinion, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and or judgment, but there's a lot of there's a lot of real good fights. I like them all. I like them all. Um, do you think Zabit will be Holloway's biggest threat? That's that's a fucking fight. Also, Zabit, that's a fight. That's a great fight. Uh, <laughs> that's one that might be the, the answer to to uh, uh, Joe's question. What do you think was the best possible fight in the UFC? That might be it. Uh, Mark Henry also works with Zabit, so he got to see and analyze and consume and download the information about Max up close last night with Frankie. So that's good. Yeah, it's going to be good. Unemployed Mario Yamasaki has been following David LeDuc for years. He Not only does he compete in that way, he is the main event on Friday. Did I hear of him? I know him. I know him, I know him pretty well. We were chatting today, in fact. I will see him in Myanmar. Uh, Ivan, where are you? I'm in Toronto International Airport. I'm delayed. I'm going to Hong Kong and then to Myanmar to commentate the beautiful art form of Le Wei. There's a breakdown on it on my Instagram right now. How do you see Covington versus Lawler? A uh, million variables, but Covington's really fucking good. Way better. A lot of us don't realize kind of how good he is. Because he's kind of a dick, right? Uh, but he's real good. What are those headphones? So actually, there's a mic. It's a good question. It's a mic in these. That's why I use them. Because the microphone that heads into there sounds way better, especially in a place like this that's loud and you got announcements and stuff. Favorite fights from last night's pay-per-view. I really like that. Uh, uh, Hakeem Dawadu, um, the young guy he fought, the Asian guy. There was an awesome fight. Hakeem had to really stay very focused not just fig figure him out because that not happened too, but also push him until he slowed down. The guy would pop in, hit, pop out, or sometimes hit a few times. And he was really, really good with playing with the cadence of the fight, where and where it was, where and when it, things were happening, controlling how to, when and where the exchanges happened. And when he slowed down just a little, because it's hard to put, to move that much. And it's not just, you know, training. And fitness, it's the stress of the fight. So you will slow down. He did, and Hakeem was learning and waiting and making the man fatigue, the young man fatigue, until he was more hittable. And Hakeem was better, better equipped to hit him. So it was beautifully done. I love that. I love that. You you want a drawing for a free shirt but never got any email. How do I get that? 
Okay. Can you uh, send, can you tweet me that right now? And then I'll follow you and we'll I'll DM you. Um, the code word is Bing. <laughs> Gotta love Canadians. Thank you, sir. How are you handling all the flights and traveling this week? Thank you for asking. I'm not handling them <laughs> as great as sometimes I do. Um, I'm worried my body is going to be really fucked up from this one because I didn't get to work out a lot and I get tightness in my shoulder. Uh, psychologically, it's demanding. You see, you get long periods of intense loneliness sometimes on these ones, uh, but it's all worth it. There's nothing else I'd rather. I miss my wife. I miss my dog. I really do. Um, but it's all worth it. This is a once in a lifetime chance to sit next to a ring in Burma and commentate the best fighters in the world at a 2000 year old bare knuckle fighting art form. I mean, I have to do this and to share it with people, uh, on fight pass. And, and, uh, I have to do this. How's that airport food? This is garbage, but it's very tasty. It's just sugar. It's like, I shouldn't be drinking this, but I, I wanted to treat myself. Uh, and again, kids adventure toys and games. We'll figure out that t-shirt. Just, Send me the message. If I don't respond, send it again, and I'll, and I'll follow you. We'll, we'll DM. Um, please, what do you think about Badahari versus Rico Verhoeven? Uh, what about it? Give me a follow-up question. Um, so <laughs> the master's like, don't cry. I'm not. I'm not that close to. Uh, I'm not hyper emotional. It's just. It is stressful. It is very stressful, but it's all worth it. Who wins in a rematch, Stipe or DC? I guess we'll find out in like three weeks. But Stipe's fucking in that fight. Don't be surprised if Stipe wins that fight. Do not be surprised. Who's going to win? I don't know. Alexander says, what's the most stacked division? And so what that requires me to is say, collect a whole bunch of dangerous fighters together. And the first one that comes to mind is 170 pounds. But they're all pretty badass. Sometimes you just don't know the guys. Like those two um, welterweights that fought last night, I'm forgetting both their names. That was a fucking awesome fight. Uh, uh, third fight on the main card. His name's escaping me. Um, uh, and uh, when he got on top of, of that guy, he was pounding from the guard. Like those were super talented athletes. Missing home makes sense, but you're going to do what you love. Yes, Adam, that is 100% true. Isaiah, thank you for asking. How's your family doing? Uh, my wife is good. She's she is working in a small town outside of Toronto right now. We will speak again right after this, and we'll Facetime every day. And uh, my uh, my parents are old, but they're happy. Thank you for asking. And my brothers are good. I don't see them as much, but I'm going to see them all in November. Will you ever sell a customized flashlight? Uh, I don't believe I will. But thank you for asking. Um. <coughs> uh, you guys, a lot of compliments. Thank you very much. Is Max Holloway one of the greatest pound for pound fighters ever? So I do have an answer for that. And I know that this requires judgment and opinion. And it's not really my thing right now. Uh, and I know that min that minimizes certain things that I can, certain people I can reach and stuff. But this is just where I'm at. I, I want to explore the world the way I want to explore it. Um, Mac, but Max Holloway, so the, the greatest fighters ever are essentially right now. And the greatest fighters ever in three years will be the fighters then because of the, the upgrading technology, not just understanding and stuff. Like when you saw, there was a couple of fights last night where you, and actually Frankie and Max to a certain degree, where the software is different. Um, Alex Davis fought that young woman. Um, and it's just like one is from another generation and the newer generations are better. They just are better. And it's not just like they know the skills or they learn the younger, their brains operate in a much faster capacity and able to process much more information. Uh, and they've been trained to do that. Uh, Nico Price and Jeff Neal. Thank you, Brian. I'm sure a bunch of other people will answer that for me too. And I will appreciate every one of you. Um, but yes, the, the ones now are the best ever. So the best of today are the best ever. And that, that's people who can debate that. And, and I'm not really up for debate. If you don't agree, it's just that's cool. Just don't. Um, but they are. Uh, and this is what I do. And, and the, 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 you know, the 16th best welterweight in the world today would be the Matt Hughes of, at that time, who was the welterweight champion. And that goes for almost everyone. There's some rare exceptions Fedor in his prime and Anderson Silva in his prime, you know, might beat up the, 
you know, most of the top 85ers, but, or like some of them, but not all of them. He's not going to be Kelvin, say, you know. Um, and uh, that's just where it's at. So, uh, um, did you get your Instagram back? No, I have a new Instagram at Robin Black Martial Arts. Joe Rogan, uh, my buddy, was kind enough to, to tell people about it. So, probably like 50,000 people came back like the first day he did that. So, that was amazing. But I might get it back still. I'm working on it. Featherweight is quietly stacked too. Yes, sir. Uh, Sam, I agree. How'd you fi- how did I just find out about your videos? Keep that content rolling. Thanks, Matt. Um, I think there's a lot of people in the world who love fighting who've never heard of my videos. So that's exciting for me. I can find, I can reach them. And when I do reach them, I got 600 they can watch. So it's very exciting to kind of have them break through like that. Uh, who has the best chance to just dethrone Khabib and John Jones? It's really tough. Um, but someone will. Someone will. It'll be somebody who's like a little younger now who's still going to make large jumps over the next five years. Dana baiting Connor into a Nashville fight. I didn't notice any of that. Uh, but I'd like to see that. Jorge and Connor, that'd be fucking fun. Uh, Felicia Spencer, yes. Um, I did an analysis of her for TSN going in. So tough and fearless and gutsy. That's, that's, that's one of those ones where you lose and you learn a lot about yourself and you should be very proud of that fight. She should be very proud of that fight. But which fighter has your favorite tattoos? I don't know. I mean, I like that close. Anyway, I could get you to sign a pair of gloves for me. I've been a fan since you were with Rammer. Oh, man, I miss Rammer. Um, yes, if you're in Toronto, I, I can do it. I'll tell you where I'm training at some point or where I'm doing something. If you're somewhere else, you got to tell me where you are. And when I'm there, I'll do it. Colby versus Lawler, I am looking for. Uh, this feels so underground inside baseball right now. I love it. No, that's, so, that's cool. A lot of people don't know what inside baseball is, but a lot – Inside Baseball had this deep analytical view of baseball. Never seen it, but I've heard it's still talked about 20 years later. And people in TV are like, we don't want it to be too inside baseball. It's like, why not? This thing is so memorable. We're still talking about it 15, 20 years later. But that's a compliment. I take it as well. Um, you should do a stream of UFC 3 to showcase your skills. Uh, the, the video game of it? Uh, love the evolution of martial arts. Is there a possible regression at times? You see this in opera singing where singers aren't as advanced as they were in the 1900s. That's fucking what a dynamite question. That is a dynamite question, Isaiah Soul. Uh, so when that would happen would be when they, if and when they would fall deeply out of, out of popularity. Um, because what happens when things fall out of popularity it's just not money in it anymore. And when there's not money in something, there's not as many people doing it. So you could see that. If all of a sudden change in our culture, people just start to hate it. People start to hate fighting. That could happen. It could happen. It's going to be tough to convince me to hate it. when It's what I love, but, but it could happen. And if that happened for 10 or 20 or 30 years, yes, you would see a regression because you wouldn't have what we have every week right now, I hope this isn't too loud in here. What we have every week right now is hundreds and hundreds of high-level fights. More information to be gained through all of the experimentation of all these fights by the, all these brilliant coaches that are sending them out and testing their theories in the cage. That's going on and on. That's part of why it's getting so big, so good, so evolved, so advanced. If you stopped that and you stopped that ability to test things in real time, it would start to regress. But it would take... 10 years and it would have to be very unpopular for 10 years to discourage a lot of what's happening now. But it could happen. And I fucking love that question. Could be the best one I've had in a long time. Did you hear about the UFC bullying the MMA halls live fight reaction with two straight copyrights on? Now, I don't know them, although uh, uh, one of them, she reached out to me recently. I think maybe when my Instagram was down. Not sure. She seemed very nice. And I didn't really hear. I'm so deep in my own thing, I can't follow it. But does it surprise me? No, it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me at all. They have like a very, you know, like a zero tolerance. And listen, sorry about this loud thing. I'm in an airport. This is my take on it. Again, this is an opinion. And I, opinions are, are less important to me, even my own, as I say. But if it was me, 
I certainly would not be turning allies into enemies. I certainly wouldn't be taking down hundreds of Instagram pages and attacking YouTube pages of people who love my thing. If I ran the UFC, yes, I might break. I'm just making up a number. Let's say I get $50 million by giving these digital rights to partners like ESPN and stuff. I wouldn't take $50 million or $5 million or I don't know. I don't know what the number is. If what I got in return was less exposure, less reach, less sharing and engagement, and I got and I turned uh, fans and allies into enemies, I wouldn't take that deal. I just wouldn't. But that's me. It's, it's not my business. It's their business. And my opinion is very little importance. Excited to see Max versus Volkanovski. Yes, uh, and Zabi. Yeah, They'll, those will be pretty cool. Uh, Haggerty, Yol Costa. Yep. That Dana said Masvidal is too big. Then last night he said Connor is pissed. He said that calculated. Yeah, it's a lot of like it's what it is to be a promoter, right? And we don't have to judge Dana. I mean, my dog's a dog. He barks. Like, what am I getting mad at him? <laughs> like, Dana's a promoter. He promotes. What are you getting mad at him for that? Robin Bat Black versus Bob Lazar. Which Bob Lazar? Uh, a painter. You should do a collab with Ice Poseidon. I don't know who that is. Favorite bank of all time. Shit. Impossible to answer. What's your opinion on fighters like Gunnar Nelson and Royce Gracie who don't wrap their hands? They just wear the gloves with no wraps. I once fought on a show. There's a guy named Michael McDonald. He was a fighter. He had a couple other fights. He was very, very talented. Brown belt, I think, in jiu-jitsu, but super tough. And uh, he was sitting in the back. He fought right before me, I think, in Edmonton. And they said, you're up. He goes, okay, great. He gets up, he pulls his gloves on, he walks out. I hear a bunch of loud sounds, and then he comes walking back in. He throws his gloves off me at one. I loved it. Uh, you know, it's yours. Do, do, what you, do what you feel. There's no right or wrong. If somebody said, hey, you know, you have a higher risk of injury, and you know that, but you like something else about the feel, that's it's your trade-off. You can make those trades all day long. You think Logan Paul would beat CM Punk in a boxing match? Yeah. 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 Grappling match, maybe not. I don't know. Try not to get in deep and miss your flight, though, dude. Good, good point. But yeah, it's like five, and it's only two twenty. Got delayed. Do you think Sabit will be Holloway's biggest threat? I do, but uh, they're both getting better all the time. I do want to see that one. That's that's the only real meaningful hundred and forty-five pound fight for me. Like, and not meaningful like titles and all these things, but meaningful like for me, for my curiosity of like how things are, dynamics of things. What's your opinion, Robin, on the hate on Joe Rogan's commentary? I think it's because he's Joe Rogan. Agreed. Like, who hated on his commentary? Is that is there is that a common thing or is that last night? Uh, because they can fuck themselves. Joe is wonderful. And everybody copies Joe. Joe innovated MMA commentary. You're like, if somebody who, also commentary is fucking challenging. It's, it's a massive skill. It is a high caliber skill and it's a precarious skill. And if anybody that has never commentated anything in their life or, or spoken for a living or knows anything about martial arts, watches Joe or anybody else and criticizes, that's a reflection on them. That is not a reflection on the great Joe Rogan. Don't fucking get it twisted. But if there's somebody specific that's criticizing him, you can send me to, I, I have some mild curiosity. With all these new men and women coming to MMA and with all their broad-based martial arts training early success and their success, have you changed your mind on any of the classic martial arts? I, I don't have any... I mean, I change my mind on everything all the time. It evolves. My, my understanding and my interpretation of meaning of things changes co constantly. But, but all the martial arts are wonderful. I just think their do dogmas and their doctrines. People say you have to do this and it must be that way and always do this and never. And all of that is incorrect. Most of that is incorrect. My apologies. You should rarely say always and never. You should rarely, rarely is always and never correct because it's change. Always keep your hands up. Bullshit. Why should I keep my hands up? Well, because if you drop your hands out, I'll punch you. Great. So if I want you to throw a punch at me, one way I can do it is by dropping my hands. I, you use these things to create scenarios. You know, never cross your feet. Why not? Because a guy will t take you down. 
well, what if I want you to try to take me down and I'm tricking you? I may cross my feet. Like everything they say never to do at the high levels, you do them to get the reaction of the person who wants to penalize you making that choice. So that's the problem is with most of these doctrines, you must keep your hands like this. You must always punch this way. There's no, you know, there's must and don't. It's at, at high levels of martial arts and life, is, is, it doesn't make sense. It's not truth. It's good to look, to teach children don't touch hot things. It's good to teach children always be polite. Like there are always as a never as you should learn as your base of understanding, but they're not the truth. They're not the truth. They're ways for you to understand stuff long enough to realize they're not the truth. Joe Rogan's commentary. Superb. Maybe he has one foot out the door. He may, those two things could be true, both simultaneously true. Maybe he's you know, going to stop doing that in a year or two. Uh, and his commentary is superb. They're not. Will you ever do a collab with Burger Planet? I don't know Burger Planet. But I like burgers and planets. Uh, Machida. Machida and Musasi, yeah, I'd like to see that. Machida is uh, he's he's even better, I think, than than he was. I was up around him at the last Bellator fight when he fought Chael, and he's going to be even harder to fight, I think. But Musasi's so good. I, I'm down with that. You're 100 percent right about turning friends into enemies. Never, sorry, not never. Some there'll be ne- rarely say never. Uh, it's it's generally a bad idea to create enemies, anyways. It's a doubly bad idea to turn friends into enemies because you just had a friend and no enemies, and now you have no friend and an enemy. It's double bad. Odd interview with Bob Lazar. Um, can't watch your pre-fight breakdowns from South Africa yet, but I'm pretty sure I would have been less surprised by Felicia's performance last night. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Adam. Uh, South Africa. Wow, I've never been there. I really want to go. There was a chance I could have gone last fall for a Sorry about that sound for a commentary gig, uh, but it didn't, it fell through. Uh, but yes, we, we really kind of explain what about Felicia made her special as an overachiever. And we called her an overachiever, to, which is not accurate, probably. It's a nice description, but did she overachieve last night or did she achieve how she achieves? If you're continually overachieving, you're not overachieving, you're just doing what's, what you do. Makashev is a top five. Uh, he's very, very good. But I, you know, I got to see more. Last night's fights were fantastic. I'm not sure if we've already covered this, but does Holloway have more legacy to earn by staying and defending Featherweight or trying to move up again? He's so young. He'll do a lot of things in the, in that time. You know. I got another thought. I don't think we all kind of talk about legacy, but you know, what is it really? Like, I think when you think about it, like, what's Anderson Silva's legacy to, you know, a 29-year-old who watches five fights a year? They go, oh, man, he is one of the goats. And that's it. You know, it's not, I don't know if it's as real as we try to make it, except for to you. To the audience, on one level, I care about having an audience. I care that people love my breakdown. So I can't imagine what somebody really big who did really great things. I just make videos, right? Like, what if you did something very special? Of course you would care about about how people reacted. But at the same time, you should be doing these for that sense of accomplishment in yourself. You know, and that sense is there regardless. Like, you know, if I'm Max Holloway or, you know, Demetrius Johnson was like, I just want to be the best 125er ever. That's in him to be like undeniably the best ever at going up or down or winning two things or fighting, you know, all these different things are just assignments you give yourself for your own purpose. Of course you care about what people think of yours. You know, when, you know, when a hundred thousand people uh, watch my breakdowns, I get thrilled and you get 500 comments saying they love it. Of course it's moving. Can't imagine what it'd be like to be a brilliant artist like these guys. Uh, of course they care, but it's about what they want to to feel and experience and accomplish in themselves. Yair versus Max. Can Yair win? Of course he can win, but he's not on that. At, look, the last few times I've seen him perform, he has not appeared to be at, at this level of sophistication. What aspect of GSP's game made him as great as he is? That GSP's game, like how he moved and how he fought and what he did, it was brilliant, but it was all Sorry, my shoulder's already sore and I haven't even got on this flight. Uh, It's all process driven. And his process was find a flaw, 
fix a flaw. Find a flaw, fix a flaw. That's what made George so great. It was this constant study of himself to look for some other place to improve constantly. We can all learn from that. Do you think we'll ever see male versus female in the UFC? No. You'd love to see Paige Van Zandt versus the Black Beast. Well, would you? I do not think we're going to see that or any other one ever. I hope we don't. I do hope we don't. I don't think this is something we need. Joe did an interview with Bob Lazar. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um, Robin, check out The Weasel on YouTube. He did a breakdown when he criticized the commentary from last night. Uh, he did it respectfully. No, I don't want to watch that. I, I don't. I don't believe in criticism anymore as a as a tool i don't i don't uh so i'm not going to watch that um what are we trying to gain here the motives often you know when you criticize somebody else by explaining that you know more than them or you have the ability to say this was done but it's really this you're not and that's okay i'm not being judging or being mad at anyone for doing that but that's just not my thing that's just not going to be my thing so i don't i don't need this Thanks for the content and sharing your views. Very welcome. It's my, my privilege. Will you be in Vancouver for the UFC in September? I don't think I will. I wish I was, but but I will be making pieces on it. I'll be making, you know, breakdowns and stuff for TSN. Do you think broad MMA training provides the technical flexibility that's sometimes lacking in the classics? Uh, I think the more different things you train, the better, and that includes yoga and weightlifting and running and climbing and stuff in general for people. Robin, so like, you know, Floyd didn't get touched too much, but wasn't a big hitter. Let's say boxing rounds are limitless till a man is dropped. Basically, what would be more likely? Um, people who don't get touched much would eventually hope, presumably fatigue the other guy yeah, enough that they would touch was them up a lot. Would Floyd KO his man or would he likely get, get hit? I, I like what you're thinking. But I think basically if you're trying to hit me and I'm moving, whichever one is better at, if I'm better at moving, then you are at missing. Missing is a skill. Punching and not hitting something is a fatiguing exercise. So whichever one of us is going to fatigue, it's going to go the other way. Bob Lazar is the master of Aikido. Ah, he trains Steven Seagal. God, I would love to see Joe talk to that guy. I bet Joe is respectful though. Sam, I'm 21 and graduating college in 10 months. I don't know what direction I want to go in my life after. Any tips or book recommendations that can help me find a purpose? Okay. Um, read as much as possible. Um, I'd read the four agreements. Read the four agreements. It's F-O-U-R, agreements. Uh, it'll give you a perspective, simple perspective, very simple. Um, that's on how to look at the world. Uh, in such a way that you can keep an open mind to things and be less influenced by noise, I think, is maybe is one of the things. But basically, whatever is the most interesting thing in the world to you is what you should be doing. If you go to, you know, another college or get another degree or try to craft some some path to a job, that path will change. So if I say, I want to be an architect and I go to school, an architecture school, well, in 10 years, being an architect is going to be different or may not exist. Maybe it's all automated. I don't know. But all, and that may not be a great example, but all of these things change. So as it changes, if you're immersed in the thing you love that you and you learn about the technologies that are available and you keep improving as a person, eventually you're just doing the thing you love. So the simple answer is fuck careers and, and career paths. Find a deep passion that you would do 12 hours a day like I do and then do that thing 12 hours a day. Well, you won't be able to do it 12 hours a day because you're going to have a part-time job that you're going to have to do and spend all your extra money trying to break open the thing that you love. You're going to do that for eight years, spend about the same as it would cost to be a doctor, and in the end, you'll do that thing. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get more specific, but that's what I believe. Why don't people grapple against Holloway since they can't win standing? Well, Frank, he tried, and he couldn't take him down. Also, and, and it's a good question, but uh, the big issue is grappling. To grapple me, you must get to me, and then you must grab me, and then you must engage me physically. In the getting to me part, uh, Holloway punches you in the face a lot and then moves away. 
and then you have to try to get to me again. And then Holloway punches you in the face and, a lot and moves away. And then you try to get to me again, I punch you in the face and I knock you out. Um, and uh, because I'm not stationary. If I'm stationary, you can grab me. If I'm not stationary, I hit and I move and I hit and I move and I move and I hit and you, you're off balance, so you can't grab them. And that, that happens in the open space and people are very good at it now and, and uh, Max is extremely good at it. The few times that Frankie was able to get deep enough, you wanna, you know, they, we hear single, double, high crotch, whatever it is. Basically all that any of that means is I wanna join my hands somehow on you. Your leg, a single leg, will grab it. The double leg will grab both legs. The body lock, you know, the high crotch. It's just ways that I can connect my hands and, and uh, try to take you down. And to do that, I got to get a hold of you. And to try to get a hold of you, I get punched out. And it's really that simple. It really is. Um, I missed a whole bunch. Okay. Skip my question. What's your general take on Leiway and Leiway fighter in the, in the UFC? Can they compete without BJJ? Well, you have to know how to do all the the potential things or somebody's going to do one of them that I don't know. So a boxer can't fight Leiway because he can, but he's not going to do very well because he can't doesn't know how to kick and get kicked and elbowed and knee. And so he's going to put his limited simple skill set against me and I'm going to do everything. And then when I punch, kick, knee, elbow, and head, but, and then I have to go in and somebody can, and there is some grappling and throwing in, in Leiway, but there's no fighting on the ground and somebody, I end up on the ground, I will lose because I don't know what I'm doing. So what would you do? You just learn how to do it. And then you're, you can call yourself a layway fighter, but now you're a wrestler who does layway. And truthfully, on a high level, there's no such thing as any of these martial arts. They're just belief systems. They're not a, really a thing. You know, they're just collections of options. Free fighting is when you can do anything with your body. You use your whole body. You use all of your, your facilities. And you fight with everything. That's free fighting. And that's fighting. And Every other collection of rules, beliefs, dogmas, structures, you know, all of that is just made up. So you just learn how to grapple or whatever you want to call it, and then you do it. Thoughts on the UFC giving the MMA holes two false cop play strikes in one month. So that somebody asked about that earlier. I've met one of them. Uh, they were very nice, and I'm not surprised that the UFC does that. They, you know, here's people that are doing work, trying to like share ideas on Instagram or on YouTube with, uh, and they're hitting us with it. It's bad strategy, but it's strategy that they created because they made partnerships, high, big money partnerships with ESPN and you know Brazil and England or whatever to have con to only let them use the content. So they have to defend that those deals by taking down my Instagram or attacking these guys. And uh, as a result, it makes a negative impression on them. And hopefully the money that they gain in these deals is more powerful for them, for their sake, then the negative, the, the negative detriment of harming their relationships with people like us. So hopefully that works out for them. Robin, love your content. Got to run. Well, thanks, Joe. It was good hanging with you. Yes, let's, uh, petit uh, uh, let's try to stay positive. That's a way you live and being happy without the need to say something negative about others. Yeah. Uh, criticism, and it's the same thing when people say, this fighter's not good at this, and this is what he needs to improve. My general response is, who the fuck are you? How on earth can you look at Anthony Pettis and say he's got a weakness when you don't even understand how he fights and what it is to fight and what happens in the experience? You know, and it's the same thing. Somebody criticizes commentary. It's not the same as making videos. It's not in an arena with people chatting in your ears and things are happening and people everywhere. It's a completely different thing. You don't understand it enough to criticize. I've commentated 600 shows. And you know what I learned from doing that? Don't fucking criticize people because it's really hard. You know, I, I just, we don't need to do that. There's no benefit in it. There's, there's nothing in there for us. If you want to grow your audience by negatively speaking about other people, that's your choice, but I'm not going to do that. Do you think the, uh, and I have, because I'm human, I, I fucked up and, and done things that aren't smart and not kind because we're humans, we fail. Some of us have said mean things to our mother when we were mad. You know, humans are flawed. That's what we do. I'm sorry I look over here. It's just, it's weird to look in there. Uh, humans are flawed. That's what we do. So I shouldn't judge. You know, you can do that. Over time, somebody who criticizes other people uh, will learn, p potentially learn that that's not a benefit to them. It doesn't make them happier. It doesn't make them better. But 
it's, and they may not. And they may go a different way and find that actually it's very rewarding for them and I'm wrong. So um, Frankie didn't try unlike other times. Frankie tried. He could have won in the previous fight if he used more kicks. That's a criticism. And you are not in a UFC fight. And you are incorrect. And I don't, I'm not trying to be rude. But when we say, you know, Jose Aldo would have done better if he kept his hands up, we have no idea what we're talking about. Ne only 2 or 3% of the actual information is available from our perspective watching on television. Like 95% of the information is not there. What it feels like, what it smells like, what it, what's happening in our body, what we see, what we don't see, what's injured. We're missing it all. So we don't have the ability to, to criticize because we're criticizing out of our asses. It's true. BJJ has led many people, has led me many good people in books. I'm glad. Yeah, BJJ is fantastic. Taking a lot of book recommendations from me. So you wanted to recommend one from your field. Doing Good Better by Will. Doing Good Better by Will Mask Mask Skill. Good for anyone thinking about what to do. Doing Good Better. Thanks. That's good. Even Aldo didn't try to grapple him, even though he has to be better on the ground. So I think we're not understanding what happens. The only way I can grab you is if we, I punch my way in or I hurt you, I get you st uh, still. It's not like the old days where I just grab you whenever I feel like it. I can't do it unless I strike with you against Max Holloway. It's not like if ever you're looking at somebody who's a wonderful champion and six other wonderful champions didn't do it or couldn't do it, our response should rarely be, they made mistakes, I know better. But our response, a better response could be is, I don't understand why I'm seeing, but these geniuses must have a good reason for not doing this. It can't be as simple as, they're dumb, I'm smart, because we know that's not the case. We should look at it and go, I'm dumb or blind to the idea of what they're experiencing, because clearly from where I sit, I think you should just be able to grab Max Holloway and take him to the ground, but yet these geniuses couldn't do it. They must be stupid. Like, it just you got to switch that perspective. They couldn't do it for some reason unknown to me. I don't know what it is, but it must be there. That's, that's, that's how to learn. How long are you training martial arts? My whole life. What's your favorite domain? Probably just some form of, of kickboxing or striking is my favorite to train. Um, but anything. I like, I like moving my body. I like choking people. I like getting choked. I don't like getting choked, but I like learning from getting choked. Uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson. Can't wait to see him. Um, what says SJW? Yeah. I think it's a bad thing. I think that's some insult from some someone. I don't know. Uh, Robin Black, the man who thinks other people shouldn't have their own opinions. They, everybody, everyone has their own opinions. They, I don't care what they do or don't have. What they should do is consider that their opinions are of very little importance. And if they freed themselves from it, they might learn a whole lot of other things, change their perspective with the way they look at the world. But they certainly have the right to whatever opinion they want. It's just an option to think to yourself, my opinion is a waste of mental energy. I wonder what else I could spend my energy on. It's just a thought. What caused the extreme about face in terms of your anti-Steve rhetoric? I, I, well, I do love, I know many Steves. I have a brother named Steve who I love dearly. I'm an uncle Steve. Um, but no, I, Steves are still are still the guys who are getting beat up in, in my videos. I just haven't had some Steves for a bit. Being hard on people sometimes makes them stronger. If you're going to treat everyone soft all the time, <sighs> you might turn them weaker. So you think the key thing to make, say, Joe Rogan or Max Holloway stronger is someone else being negative towards them? These are strong, successful people, happy and successful and, and powerful. And they probably did that without, while learning not to criticize other people because nobody needs their shit or asks for it. That's, that's, that's why. He is criticizing people and telling them not to criticize. This guy's left about about four very snarky things. You don't have to watch. It's cool. You feel the UFC is slowly chasing away their fans with their new ESPN deal. They are definitely chasing away some fans and turning some allies into enemies. But 
I think, you know, I think they they will be fine. I don't think they're going to, I don't think it's going to be the end of their world. What art do you enjoy training in the most and how often do you train? And three to four days a week I train. I probably kickbox the most. I like to hit things and move my body around. Uh, Felicia Spencer learned being heavy bag for 15 minutes doesn't win fights. Yes, she did, but she also learned that she's special. And that's why you take risks. I just bought the four agreements and I have a quiet, rainy Sunday to digest it. Thank you, Robin. You're very welcome. After you've done it, you will be thrilled to know there's also a book called The Fifth Agreement, which was my favorite, but it doesn't work without the others. Robin, you've read on the weasel's criticism. Is your read on it is pure speculation based on the word criticism. And you've mischaracterized his work without knowing what he said and how. I, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know him um, or her or them. Uh, but criticism in general, essentially, I am, I, uh, I'm fairly against in general. Even if it's like done politely, polite criticism done from somebody who is not qualified to criticize work, which is anyone who criticizes fights s- south of, say, Matt Serra, uh, criticism to, to critique the work of an expert requires an expert and that's my flaw with criticism in general and experts tend to not want to without being asked critique others work they don't like why the fuck would anybody go around criticizing the work of others it's just it's it doesn't make any sense It's, it's senseless it does nothing for you or maybe it does if it if your goal is to appear smarter or better in some way than that what you criticize then it can but in general it is not something I think is a positive for anybody. The criticizer, the critiqued, or the audience. You know about criticism as separate from pretty or frivolous complaining or nitpicking. It's the under-recognized appreciation which underpins coherent critical thinking. I disagree. Further, you criticize that I didn't. I don't know of them in a pity and frivolous way while asserting that he and people like him are doing something bad. I believe criticism is bad. That's not... That's not rude to anyone. That's not a judgment to anyone. The, the art or act of criticism, he's a high quality guy. That's really nice to hear. And that is really nice to hear. And other people can 100% disagree with me. They can think that criticism is a fantastic thing. I'm not telling you what to believe. My belief is that criticism is something of a low caliber in general, unasked for, uh, almost always, and almost always, criticism is done. Somebody criticizing an expert when they themselves are not an expert, and that's not a criticism of any specific person you may be speaking of, or anyone else who has a YouTube channel or talks about anything. In general, I am not a fan of criticism. I, I hope that's clear enough. Um, but if not, I apologize. I could try to do better. Ivan, don't criticize me. We're in a safe space. It's not about that. You can criticize anyone you like. And you and I can then decide whether or not we think that's a good thing. We can have a conversation saying, I don't think somebody should criticize Rampage Jackson's skill unless they are an actual expert in fighting. And I don't mean in training. I mean in fighting. Favorite part about having an MMA platform? Just hanging with people and chatting with people. Being able to share ideas and chat with people. Easy on the Steve hate. Uh, sorry, Steve. I do love many Steves. Steve is a unisexual name, neither female or male. Do you think Joe Rogan has a big hog? There's some video about somebody looking at it all the time. I, I don't know. I would not speculate. I'm back. That's not like saying I should have tried to grapple Connor because he was dominating fight standing. I don't think we're having that same level of conversation about this. We would try to grapple Connor. Everybody who fought Connor, who didn't grapple him, had the intent to grapple him. Eddie, Eddie Alvarez intended to grapple him. For some reason, he did not or could not. That's real. That took place in his brain. Robin, do you regret all those tattoos yet? No, baby. I don't. And never will. Uh, blah, blah, blah. People had big egos and wanted to beat him in his own game. I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, McGregor. 
Respect Robin Black for reading the live chat, son, like most other. I don't always. Sometimes I just start talking shit. But today I called it a Q&A, so I wanted to call it a Q&A and just chat with people. And I'm having fun. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Questions. Are you a black belt in any mar- uh, martial art? I'm a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. And uh, here in Russia, everybody knows how to fight. Mm, I love Russia. I've been to Russia three times. I've enjoyed it immensely. I've enjoyed the Russian people, and I've enjoyed working with Russian people. And I enjoy Russian fighting. But I, I love everybody. I've never been to a country where I didn't like the people. And I would fucking feel terrible if I said, like, you know, yeah, I like 99 countries, but I don't like this one. I like them all. I'm going to Myanmar today. I'm going to Hong Kong on the way there. Like, I'm stoked. I like people. Critical thinking is a way of forming strength. Yes, this is true. Quality reflection of reality has no connection to authority. It doesn't have to come from only certain people. No, but there is something that we need to recognize. It's valuable to all of us to recognize that expertise is a real thing. The reason it's valuable to us is because if you do not have any and you don't think it's a real thing, you are likely not going to achieve any. But if you don't have expertise, say, for example, I don't know anything about cars. If I know that that there are experts in cars and I am not one, I can then say, what did they do to become an expert? Oh, it was research. It was time. It was training. It was education. It was trial and error. And I can learn the process of developing expertise. This is valuable for all of us if we recognize that there are real experts and we are not one. And then we figure out the difference between us and them was process. Now we've learned a process, right? If we just say, you know, my opinion on how Mark Cuban runs his business is just as valid as his, I'm a fucking idiot. I am purposefully finding a way to now not allow myself to get smarter. Hey, Robert, uh, just wondering, how do you always stay in the right mind set to be thinking analytical? Um, it's a it's a habit. You train a habit. Uh, you train a habit. You do it, and you do it a lot, and then you enjoy it, and then you start to think. Thinking begets thinking. It's just think more, read more. Hey, Robin, uh, but I like your question, Maxwell. I hear what you're saying about criticism. However, as fans, that's what we do. Same as NBA, MFL, NFL. And it's, it's us fans getting emotionally invested in the sport and us paying to watch. This is good. But to, to say that basketball player sucks, but I don't know anything about basketball, is not even really criticism. It's just I'm talking crazy shit. Like, I'm not connected to reality. If I say... I don't like that guy because he missed the shot. Or I was so invested in this game that, and now these guys lost. I'm mad. Fucking right. But if you say that coach sucks and you actually don't know anything about the sport, it's okay to say it. By all means, have fun. But understand that, like, we're getting far from reality now. You know? Whoa, I'm late. Uh, that's okay, Joey. Keep saying he's not an expert and yet you know nothing about I'm not talking about why so somebody named Michael Falkov is obsessed with something I said seven minutes ago in general about a, like a large population of ideas and people and he thinks I'm talking about one person. I don't know why, but he's obsessively sure. You do realize you're criticizing everyone for being critical, right? I am not. I'm making an observation and I'm expressing my belief about it. I'm not criticizing anyone. It's, this gets very difficult. It gets very discouraging. You know, it gets very discouraging. And it shouldn't when only one or two people, you know, kind of see it a different way. And it's okay that people see it a different way. But it really gets discouraging when you're so sure that you, you've got something valuable, valuable insight that some people would actually take something from. It could really, really enjoy or change the way they see the world and and. You know, it's coming from a 50-year-old man who's traveling the world and enjoying his life and is very happy. And people are like, no, you're stupid. I don't. I disagree. You don't know what you're saying. And that's okay. I don't take it personally. I would never take that personally. It's just very discouraging that, you know, whatever, wherever we are, we might just refuse to, to, to think about conflicting ideas. I'll think about conflicting ideas. If somebody said, do you know... There are many great reasons that crit- the act, the art of criticism has value. Here's a book. I will definitely read that. And upon reading it, I might be like, you know, there, there are some really great points about the value of criticism. But in general, most of the time, somebody who will criticize an expert 
is not the same level of expert because at a high, high level, true experts don't do that. They don't. They just don't. They, you can't become a master of your domain by worrying about what other people did, you know, and, and then taking the time to somehow try to point out their weaknesses or flaws or, you know, what you think they should do better. Like, that's not a road to mastery. Between PFL, Bellator, and one, which do you think has the more stacked roster? It's a good question. A lot of brilliant fighters ever. I just do not know so many, so many good fighters in both. Bless up to Robin. How much from Pennsylvania, man? Hey, thank you. How does it feel to get knocked out? Weird. Feels weird. What you don't actually feel getting knocked out. That's a really cool question because I never thought about it. You don't feel getting knocked out at all. You feel waking up confused. That's the feeling. Uh Robin is awesome and hilarious. Thank you. By the way, I really appreciate so much about your approach to things, and I've been following you for a while. Thanks, Michael. Just to clarify where you're coming from. Thanks, man. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Robin, have you read Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz? No, I haven't, but I like the sound of it just on the, on the surface. Do you feel Max Holloway's eyes will find their way back together? I think they're pretty pretty genetic. What's up, Robin? Love the philosophies. Have really helped me in my own life turn things around the last couple of years. Thanks, Neil, for taking the time to tell me that. If when you do commentary for the UFC, who would your ideal line, line up to do commentary with? I don't know if I'll ever do it, to be honest. I don't know if I ever will. Um, I mean, I was on Fight Pass last weekend with two great people, Tom Mahler and Michael, and um, going to be on Fight Pass commentating Leway this weekend, but I don't think I'll ever, I, I think there's a pretty decent chance I'm not going to ever commentate a UFC. I've come to happy, comfortable grips with that. Uh, it's just a company, you know, it's just a, a collection of people in a business, right? Uh, are the fights brilliant? Fucking rights, they are. Would I love to call those fights? Sure, I would. Of course I would. But can you, can you shape executives in a business to see things your way? You can't. And why can't you? Because you can't control how other people think. And you shouldn't try. Uh, but anyways, if I did, I really would like to work with John Anakin, of course. I'd like to work with John Anakin, Joe. Of course I would. Thanks, Synth. Love you, Robin. Bye for now. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to work with Dan or, or um, Dan Hardy or Dan um, Daniel, Cru uh, Daniel Cormier or Dominic Cruz. Dom's brilliant. I love talking to Dom Cruz. I love talking to him. We spent half hour uh, at some Bellator show I was at recently. He was cornering someone. Uh, biggest threat to each champion in each weight class. Stipe might beat Dan. He, he's a very good chance that he won't, but he could. He's in it. That's, that's a threat. From all the fighters you've met, who would you say is the most humble fighter? Frankie Edgar, maybe. Frankie Edgar jumps to mind for somebody so fucking great. Obviously, an appreciation of quality reflection of reality probably entails recognition and appreciation of the reality of experts, I think. I literally didn't say anything along those lines. Sorry, man. Sorry if I misinterpreted you. Thank you for being kind and sorry that I, was, that I didn't clarify myself correctly. Um, that's on me. And thank you for being so cool. If Spencer over hyped after last night, is Spencer over hyped after last night. Oh, I mean, fuck, that was pretty impressive. She stayed it right to the end. I mean, if she ended up on that woman's back in the last minute, she didn't, but she could have. And if she did, would we have said that? It's, it's one or two small changes, and all of a sudden, everything is there. If you could change any one thing about MMA at large and its practices, God. A lot, lot of things, but it's mostly business and business and stuff, not not the fighting. If you could only train in three martial arts, what would they be? Jeet Kune Do, because that would be the one that covered the most. And then boxing or kickboxing and some type of grappling. Uh, but JKD would be the one that would allow you to kind of train everything. What do you think all Russians have the same shaped heads? Ben, I do not believe that is so. If you're going to be a keyboard warrior... You might want to be able to spell. I don't know who you're talking to, but we don't got to get rude at each other. Robin Black, this is a hateful world. Get used to it, people. Ah, it is somewhat, but it's we're, we're also good people. So you're pushing your idea of how things should be in your eyes to everyone else. No, I'm not. I'm using my YouTube channel to offer my, my thoughts. 
and you choose to be here. So, so, so should we criticize criticism or encourage it? Ah, it's not for me, but people get to live their own lives. And uh, all I'm hoping is you, if I believe something, and you chose to come to my channel because you're like, I think that guy might have some beliefs I'm interested in. Maybe not. I'll tr turn it off or I'll get off it if I don't. Or he might. Then, then come on in and I'll offer some ideas. And you don't have to take them. I respect that you don't want to criticize, but you can't tell me Alvarez tried to grapple Connor. You're, you're stuck on that. He did. Talk to him. He's like, I came in and I wanted to grapple him and I just couldn't. I don't know why. When somebody says... I wanted to wrestle him and I, I couldn't and I can't explain it. Something happened in the brain. Did it happen at random or is it happened as a result of some of the mechanisms that the other person did? This is just true. I mean, again, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but you did come to my channel and then we're doing a QA and a and you're asking my thoughts. You recognize that I may have some type of expertise after... 1,300 breakdowns and 600 live commentary fights from around the world and studying martial arts for 40 years. Uh, so why wouldn't you just accept that I might have some valuable insight? Not saying don't d disagree, but I am saying that on the third or the fourth or the fifth time, you could also be like, fuck, does that guy have some, does he have maybe, that guy whose YouTube channel I came up, does he maybe have some kind of valid point? Is there something there that I'm not seeing? Maybe that guy with 40 years of experience in, in a topic might see something I don't. Should I just disagree? And, oh, no, I wanna, or should I try to see if there's something I don't understand? That's up to you. That's up to you. What's, that's like saying Rhonda tried to grapple Holmes after her head was spinning around for most of the fight. Rhonda did try to grapple Holmes. Yeah, I think you're a troll. I think now we know you're a troll. That one, you, we do know. Uh, and hey, man, so you, you wanted to come hang out here. If that's what you want to do, then by all means. What's the tiny dude staring over his shoulder? We're at an airport. There's people everywhere. What? Uh, we've been on here for an hour. This has been fun. Robin, is studying opponents good? Mm, good question. There's definitely people who um, study them and it doesn't work for them. They end up walking into the big thing. But in general, knowing your opponent and knowing yourself is really powerful, right? Being knocked out doesn't feel like anything until the next morning, said Kinshiro. Uh, it feels like something to me. The shocking part is waking up and not knowing where you are. That's it's really, it's really, un, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, you spoke about the, no, I didn't. Someone brought up somebody. You, you brought him up. I don't know him. I, here's the thing. I don't, oh, you said I was talking about your comments more generally clear than you called me immature. Oh, I didn't call you immature. Oh, I'm sorry. If I did, I deeply apologize. I really do. I really do. I don't know. There's almost no chance that I'm going to consume other people's stuff. I literally have no time left in the world. Like, none. I don't even watch my favorite TV shows. Like, I have one show usually that I watch at a time. But I just, I'm never going to consume other people's stuff. So that weakens me that maybe they're way better, fantastic, and there's something. But no, if I called you immature, that is, I sincerely apologize. That is outside of my outside of my character and outside of what I would normally do. So I'm, I'm very sorry about that. How often do you shave and do you go against the grain? I shave only every few days, two days or so. And often I do go against the grain. Robin's the best fight analyst as far as general knowledge combined with entertainment value. That's very kind. Uh, I, I don't know that there's a best in a lot of things where they're just, you know, they're just based on trying to improve skills all the time. I'm trying to improve my, what I'm seeing, what I'm understanding, and I'm trying to improve ways to say it in a way that's very, very simple to understand that I can make a nine-year-old understand. That's the job. It's not, you know, uh, Dan Hardy's the best. Yep. And he doesn't yell you how to think while doing it. Huh? I think he's great. Um, love you, Robin. So glad you got your own show. Uh, thank you. Hi from France. Hi, France. Do you think Cyborg would beat CM Punk even though she's a woman? I do. I do. Um, and we know this because, and I, I wouldn't endorse that fight regardless. I don't think men and women should be hitting each other. I don't think men should be hitting women in these environments. And so as a result, you can't ha have it go one way, so then nobody should hit each other. Um, do you prefer training without pressure or under pressure? Great question. Both. Both. 
But Cyborg would probably defeat him. She's more skilled. She's in better shape. Um, I got beat up by a boxer, a female boxer, three times a week for two years. Uh, she's Sandy Segura. She's the Canadian champion at my weight. Beat me up for two years. Uh, anybody who's ever grappled when you're a blue belt and you grapple a brown belt woman, you realize how much you know you can absolutely lose. I feel like the ones that are so offended are too stuck in their beliefs. You know, most, most successful people speak along the same lines of Robin. Uh, thanks. Robin, don't get frustrated and keep changing our lives. Thanks, man. I, I, it's not so much frustration. It's just sometimes it is. I really, this is going to sound, I don't know how this will sound. I don't care. So I'm not trying to shape anybody's thinking. I do give a shit. I see, you know, people having a challenge and I truly give a shit. And I'm like, what if I could somehow offer one thought that maybe like made my life a little easier or more comfortable or opened up some some options for me? What if I could just offer that and, and help some people? It doesn't mean I'm right. It doesn't mean that I know how to. And it doesn't mean that everything's great. It doesn't mean that I'm like some fucking expert. But I do think that. I think that like when I see people having a hard time that maybe I can give them piece of insight I learned it in a book or someone told me or somebody gave me advice or encouragement or insight and I really believe that can be done and I think it's important that we take care of each other and I really believe that uh you usually like thoughts on fighting but your personal style crusade is good well man that's cool you can hang here you're still welcome to hang here I still don't know what SJW is so um so I don't know what that is uh, it's just stressful to be mischaracterized and dismissed. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said I was sorry. I'm not being rude to mention it. I've had well-meaning intentions the entire time. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. You know, I didn't. I apologize for real. I don't really don't want to put people off. And, and I'm hoping that you accept my apology. That would be the next step that will help us both get further. I I truly apologize for offending someone if they then accept it we're fucking in shape we've, we've, we've done something real here if, if that happens if we both make that little thing don't apologize to that man no nah, i think it's important i think it's important i think people should really you know fuck we're all in this together and i don't mean this youtube thing or this airport i mean this fucking world thing we're all in this together we're all influencing each other. We're all like, and there's things pulling on you to make you a little more negative or to make you a little less healthy or to make you a little more frightened. And then there's other things pulling on you saying, fuck, you can do it. We're all in it together. I believe that. I mean, never mind, I believe that. It's clear. It's clear we're all doing this together. Alvarez even said his game plan was to grab Connor in a pre-fight interview. He said he was going to expose a by Yeah, that was his intent. He just couldn't do it. And it wasn't because he sucks. It was because it was hard. It was hard for a lot of reasons. Uh, okay. Um, who wins, Robin Black or Joe Rogan? I can tell you with a lot of certainty that uh, Joe would uh, defeat me in a grappling match, in a weightlifting match, in uh, general probably fighting, uh, kickboxing. I I was going to say maybe my, like, just my hands might be slicker, but they're not. And he's much bigger, stronger, and more athletic than me. So I think he would defeat me in pretty much everything. But that's okay. That's part of and We're all on different paths, right? How important is it, do you think, hard sparring or competing to develop skills in both domains? You got to, like, day to day, you got to flow grapple and flow roll and, you know, uh, tech spar. And then if you compete or if you are somebody who's under a lot of stress and you want to improve that part of your life, you do have to push it sometimes, but not as often. If you read the book, Writing with the Right Side of the Brain, Drawing Exercises that Put You in Flow State Within 30 Minutes. I have not, but I like the sound of this. Uh, ba -ba the only liberal soy boy I like a good amount. I'm not necessarily liberal, and I do not eat soy. Where do we get, like, somebody's like, stop apologizing. No, it's a good thing. If you were out of line, or something that you did in your action made somebody else undermine them or hurt them in some way or caused them some type of, you know, pain or something, fucking apologizing is a very good thing to do. It's a very, it's a, if you mean it. Your one-minute breakdown videos in particular seem like a special offering of culture. Thanks, man. Thank you. They're all different, right? Like, 
we're all just we're all just trying to learn stuff. We're all just you know trying to learn, improve skills and stuff. Trying and but rooted in there, you got to try to be a better person. And if you can, I can't, we can't always. And we take steps back. We're doing good. We're being kind to people. We're caring about people. And we be a dick sometimes. And we take a step back. And it sucks. But that's part of the path. Um, but yeah, but earlier when I was saying sorry to somebody, what I was apologizing for was that perhaps they felt I'd mischaracterized them. And that's something that, that I get a fair bit. People And I and not like one in a hundred million compared to you know, a politician or Joe Rogan or like, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Peterson or people like that. But somebody will take just a clip of something from what are we, we're 70 minutes here. Somebody will take a clip of something I said one time about somebody and they'll be like, this guy thinks he's this. And it's like, so, and and it doesn't bother you. Like I, if somebody is negative about my work or me, it never bothers me. I understand that's a reflection of their feelings, not mine, not me. It's none of my business to a great degree, but when you when you feel mischaracterized, it's a bad feeling because you believe that you are expressing something maybe in a good way or a kind way or a nice way or a truthful way, and then somehow somebody takes that moment and makes it something different. That's a weird one. That's why I apologize. Somebody see had said that I had mischaracterized them. I don't like that feeling. Uh, Whew. Thank you guys for helping me. Uh, uh, Seventy minutes of hanging. Am I introverted or extroverted? How do you recharge your batteries? I am both introverted and extroverted, as I think a lot of people are. And uh, I haven't been super good at recharging my batteries, but I, I think I'm going to read a lot on these on this plane. A lot. What do I got here? I brought a few books. Oh, they're underneath my thing. Uh, I got a Bruce Lee book. I got something called The Neuroscientist Who Lost Her Mind. You do expect my apology. It's mostly been a delay of a few minutes between when you've heard you address something and wrote about it, and then I wrote about it, which would be written sometimes different. That's also a weird one. People then say something and say something else and say something else, and normally it's in the actual time, and then later you read something, and you're like, hey, wait a second. You haven't, like, so I get it. Greg Hardy versus Derek Lewis, a worthy fight. Now we're getting into some dark shit. Derek Lewis is... And Greg Hardy's a little, like, we're not sure. We're all not really sure. Uh, some of us are very sure, uh, one way or the other. And some of us are like, I don't know. I'm, something, that makes me, something makes me feel uncomfortable here. Um, uh, Greg Hardy is clearly like a high-caliber professional athlete. So you take away his personality as well as behavior or the way he expresses himself or past transgressions that he was first convicted of and then it was taken uh, was it was recharged again and I don't know if we if we remove that and just look that's a really fantastic athlete um, but is he really a fantastic fighter and I don't know I, I, something makes me uncomfortable there so I don't know what it is I don't know what it is so I'm gonna kind of probably not spend a lot of time exactly read the communication delay yeah thank you uh, anyways uh, I hope this this is a, a or I'm gonna sign off in a few minutes, but I, this is an interesting thought for myself. I don't know if anybody else will find this interesting, but some people watch an, an apology when somebody's like, hey, I'm sorry if I offended you or mischaracterized you or disrespected you in some way or misunderstood you and it came out wrong. And some people see that as, as a weakness. Um, but I'm quite sure that when I see that with other people, I see that as a strength. Maybe that's why I feel good doing it. Is like I think it takes, I think it's a good thing, you know. And I think it's something we haven't. When you're a kid, sometimes you get taught that. Not all of us were fortunate enough to get taught that. And sometimes maybe maybe it was good for some people or not. I don't know. We're all different. But but you do. But when we get older, a lot of the behaviors we see around us, simple as the five heads on the screen. Nobody ever says they're sorry for anything. Nobody ever says, ah, I misunderstood you, or wow, that was a really great point. You may change my mind slightly. We never see it. But just because we never see it doesn't mean it's not good. In fact, the fact that we never see it probably makes it more worth doing because scarcity is value. If something is not done a lot, it's valuable. Why are diamonds uh, valuable? Because they're scarce, right? 
why like why are diamonds valuable? They're scarce. Why are why is kindness the truth? The truth, the truth is is scarce. The truth is scarce. And when the because we're seeing lying politicians and we see people speaking in code and saying things that sound good on television and saying things that serve their, their purpose at work and stuff. And when much of the world around us is not telling us the truth, the truth is really powerful. And that's a real gift. Like telling the truth shouldn't give you some fucking power or influence, um, but it probably will. You might find, you might find um, that if you start telling the truth, just really being truth kind, but truthful, uh, that a lot of good things will happen for you at work and, and people you deal with and, and stuff. I think you might find that just because it's so rare. It's like, people are like, wow, what's that magic you just did? And then you're like, actually, I just told the truth. All right. So if you might find that, and I think it's the same thing with like admitting that you made a mistake and apologizing for it. I think it's starting to be rare and because it's rare, it's good. And, and then the next layer is accepting an apology. That shouldn't be hard to do either, but people don't do it a lot. Someone will say, I'm sorry. And somebody will also be like, yeah, well, you did that. Like, it's like they said they were sorry. And you can see they mean it. Accept it. And then together you can move on. I know these sound like childish things, but the, the reason that it's a weird conversation is because we don't have it. Anyways, thank you guys all for, for hearing me here at the airport uh, with my delayed flight. I've still got 22 hours of... Actually, I'm more than that today, and then I've got an eight-hour sleep, and then I've got travel tomorrow again. But if you would, please go to my Instagram, at Robin Black Martial Arts, and please check out the Layway Breakdown. And retweet it, or share it, or repost it, or tag a friend, because I, I really want a lot of people to see it. If you're around and you have five pass, it's Friday night. And if you hung with me all this time and you want to support in some way, please buy a Enjoy the Hostilities or Bink or Flim Flam shirt. It's at shop. RobinBlack.com. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. And I appreciate you guys immensely. Blackout.